to the case study without wine. <laughs> we have uh, Tricia Meyer, Todd Farmer, and Eric Nigel. Thank you. All right, we appreciate you all coming instead of watching football right now. We were dissed by a lot of our friends in favor of the football game, so we appreciate how dedicated all of you are to making money, and we hope that all of you make a lot more money than the rest of them the rest of the year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so if you want to make money doing something that you love, like obviously we love wine, or even something that you kind of like, then you are in the right place. So our session... Um, we're going to do some quick introductions, and I'll go through the agenda, and then we'll just jump in quickly. So um, I'm Tricia Meyer. I am the owner of Sunshine Rewards. I also have some other niche sites. I've been in the industry um, about 10 years. I serve as the board secretary for the Performance Marketing Association and also do a lot of consulting. Hello. My name is Tom Farmer. I uh, also have a couple of niche sites, and I work for a couple different companies. One of them is in Nuvo right now, uh, a company that makes really attractive software. And Oh, this is not even on. Move closer. No, it's like, oh, I'm tapping it. It's not even on at all. Hello. Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> so my name is Todd Farmer. I'm also an affiliate and a solution provider. I have a couple of niche sites, including this one here with uh, Eric and Tricia. And I also uh, teach affiliate marketing at affiliatemarketingplan.com. And my name is Eric Nagel. Um, I'm CTO at FMTC, which is a coupon provider. Um, I'm also an affiliate. I own a few niche sites, including a partner here at the Wine Club Group. Me, real quickly, there are our Twitter handles because we're going to say some really profound stuff today. So write those down real quick so that as we say those profound things, you can be tweeting like mad and everyone at the conference will be retweeting you. And so Sunshine, Trisha, Eric Nagel, and Todd Farmer. Be simple. As oh, wait, you can see, Tresha, before we get started, ooh, yes. we have to uh, at least acknowledge uh, a very important thing here. It's Eric Nagel's birthday today. <gasps> oh, it is. Happy birthday, Eric. Thank you, everyone. Taking one for the team, having to give a presentation on his birthday. He they gave him here. free wine, though, so yeah. it's sort of worth it. <laughs> and also, before we get started, I'd like to thank you guys for doing this with me. The last couple of years have been really a great time. Thank Not you. just been good business-wise, but it's, it's an awesome experience working with you guys. So thank Aww. you. Aww. <laughs> I love you guys. All right, now we're gonna actually teach you something. <laughs> um, as you can see, we have a lot to get through. Um, but basically, the gist of this presentation is we're going to go from our initial idea phase of just the, the very basic kernel of an idea of this website, the whole way through to the profit. We're going to share our actual numbers with you, how much we made early on and how much we made up through last month. Um, and then at the end, we're going to have a resource guide that we'll give you the link to and you can download. So we're going to mention a lot of tools and we won't be listing them all up there. But at the end, you can get a copy of that resource guide and have links to all the tools that we talk about. All right, so how did we get started? Um, up there, you can see that on the left side is the real us, pretty much like we look now, only perhaps a wee bit younger there. Um, and the picture on the right is kind of how we saw ourselves when we started this site. We saw this as an opportunity to be a good learning experience. And as we noted in the introduction, we each have other full-time affiliate marketing jobs. And for us, this was just something on the side to kind of try out. So this was a learning experience. Um, it was a place for us to experiment and test things, things that we might not want to try on our own blog because we didn't want it you know, to be down for so many hours we didn't know if it would work so we put the site together in the hopes that we'd be able to learn from each other um, we had been doing some mastermind work together which Eric will talk about later but we wanted to learn from each other and lastly it was just going to be fun I mean obviously wine is fun so we thought that this would just be a fun site and if we got to make some money then that would kind of be a bonus so um, Eric's gonna talk a little bit about why we chose wine right well Let's just get the obvious out of the way. We like wine. Um, but the important thing is we're not wine experts. All right, we can taste these wines and say, yeah, it's good and everything. But you know those like Gary V people who can just like rip apart a wine and tell you every little thing about it? That's not us. So it's important to know that we, going into this niche, we like wine, but we're not reviewing wine. We're reviewing wine clubs. And it's very easy to review a wine club. 
you get a shipment and you open it up and you say, oh, it's packed in styrofoam or it's packed in biodegradable cardboard or whatever. So we were not experts at wine. We're still not experts at wine. Um, but we chose this niche because we heard from some of our OPM friends, outsourced program managers, um, that wine clubs make a lot of money. So it helps to have, know people in the industry. That's why you're here at Affiliate Summit, is to start networking, to start you know, hearing from other people. Um, don't go chasing every lead that you hear, or else you'll end up buying penny stocks on Wall Street, all right? I mean, there's a lot of good information out there, but do your own research. Um, in 2011, I think it was, Trisha approached Todd and I about starting a mastermind group. So we worked together for a year on that. At Affiliate Summit West 2012, we presented on um, how the mastermind group went, that's that, that picture is. And at that session, we cornered Todd into agreeing to do a project together, um, which turned into the Wine Club Group. Yeah, so when we got started, we, um, everyone, when you get started in any business venture, you always want to have expectations set. So therefore, there's no surprises down the road. So we approached this in that same manner, just like you would sign like an NDA with other companies. We had to at least establish a, 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 a groundwork, foundation for how we work together. Now, we didn't need an NDA because we already trusted each other completely. And so what we needed to do, though, is at least establish and write it down and look at it and agree on it a bullet point of terms. And so that's kind of how we started it, just realizing like, um, for instance, we wanted to set expectations. We uh, wanted to recognize that this is a side business. So we didn't have too much time invested in too much, you know, expectations of other people's time. And also the value of each other's time. We wanted to make sure that we were all level playing field. Like even though I might bill out at a certain rate or Eric might bill out at a higher rate or Trisha at a higher rate than that, in terms of this business, we all bill out at the same rate. So all of our efforts are equal in terms of the time we put together. And that was also, I think, really helpful when you get things set up. Um, and also money stuff. How much can we each spend like at any point? Do we need to agree on, like two of us have to agree on a certain amount of money, like over $100, or do we all agree on certain amounts of money to be spent, right? So that kind of stuff really helped out a lot. And also, um, if we're going to actually convert this into its own legal entity, because we started just by using uh, one of our affiliate accounts and this agreement that all of our efforts will uh, go to this affiliate account and we'll get our, our payments, our share of it via that affiliate account. So we wanted to have that as an understanding. So there was low barrier to entry. We didn't have to set up some big LLC to start with and we all understood where we stood in order to get started. Right, so the first thing that we did was we researched the competition, obviously. So, you know, the very first thing was doing a search for just plain old wine club reviews because we knew we wanted that to be the basis of our business. So when we did that search, we looked at two things. We looked both at the organic results and also we looked at the paid ads on that result. And we wanted to see how much competition there was, how much organic competition and how much paid competition. And then once we saw the amount of competition, you know, we were looking for how many of those sites, say in the top 10, were actually wine club review sites and how many of them were just you know, random news articles or blog posts that happened to be ranking because there wasn't anything better to rank. So when we looked and we saw that you know, in the top 10, maybe only four in that top 10 were actually wine club review sites. So then we looked to see if there was room for more to see if there would be a place for more wine club review sites. And in addition to whether there would be room for more, for the ones that were there, could we beat them? So we went and we actually looked at those sites and we kind of, you know, we took what we know about affiliate marketing, about on-site SEO, about backlinks. We, we ran some tools, we found how many backlinks they had and where they came from. We ran on-site tools to see what their sites looked like to determine whether we thought that we could build a better site, both for the term wine club reviews, um, but also for other long tail keywords. So we made a list of a lot of different long tail keywords, a lot of possible blog posts, things like that. And then we just started running those to see if we would be able to rank for those. And then also looking at the merchant keywords, looking at the number of mer you know, merchant dash review to see if we would be able to rank for those and maybe some merchants that didn't have any reviews ranking for them yet. So speaking of the merchants, <clears throat> first we searched to see how many merchants there actually were in the space. 
because you don't want to build a site around only one or two merchants. That's having all of your eggs in one basket. And Eric will talk a little bit more later about how we actually almost really got burned um, by focusing on only one merchant primarily. So we wanted to make sure that there were enough different merchants, that there would be variety for us, that there would be backup plans, and contingencies. So we searched all the major networks. You know, we went through CJ, um, Commission Junction, we went through Linkshare, we went through ShareASale, we went through um, eBay Enterprise Affiliate Network, even looked at some of the others like Link Connector, just to see how much was out there. And as you can see, I know it's tiny, but um, there were actually 27 possibilities just within ShareASale. So take that also across all of those other networks, and you can see that there were a lot of different possibilities for us. Some of them that were specifically wine club sites, and some of them that were products that were ancillary to wine clubs that we thought we might be able to work in. So. Once we got that list of all the different merchants, then we went in to see who was, who was managing each of those merchants and also how proactive they were, looking at some of the basics, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. And when we saw who was managing the programs, we reached out to a few of the people that we knew best. Um, as Eric mentioned before, there were some OPMs, outsourced program managers that we knew. So we went to them and you know we asked them, is this what you consider to be a strong niche? You know, give us your opinion whether there is room for another strong affiliate in this program. Is this merchant converting well enough that it's worth it for us to build a site for them? And when you talk to OPMs about things like that, especially if you have a good relationship with them, most of the time they will be completely honest with you. You know, no, this is absolutely saturated. We're turning away affiliates. Or yes, we're trying really hard to find more affiliates because we're just not finding affiliates that are converting the way that we want them to. So reaching out to those OPMs gave us a lot of information, both about the specific merchants that we saw in the networks, but also about the niche in general. All right, so once we had all that research done and lots of outlines and spreadsheets and lists of um, our competition and potential merchants to work with, it was time to build the website. So we went with um, WordPress um, as the foundation of the site, um, threw a theme on there. The theme that we happened to use was Udesign, which you can find on Theme Forest. Um, I know the WordPress session before this session was talking about Theme Forest. Uh, it's a great place. You, you know, go in there with $50, $70, and you can have a real professional looking website. Um, the important thing is we set a deadline. If we did not set a deadline, we'd still be building the site today. Um, the interesting thing about the deadline is, if, probably except for Tricia, Todd and I did all our work in the last two weeks. Um, that's just how we work. So, you know, the, the deadline helped. Um, it doesn't have to be extremely aggressive. Um, so putting the site together, there were a lot of plugins that would have helped us with the site, but plugins will get you like 90% of the way there, then you either have to say that's good enough or you have to do a little bit more. So I'm a programmer, which kind of helped the situation, so I was able to go in and do some custom programming on the site. So while we use WordPress, there's also some custom components to the site. Um, we have our own database behind it that holds all the merchants and all the merchant clubs, so we can just easily filter and say, you know, which clubs offer red wine only that's shipped to New Jersey? And we can come up with pages like that, which you'll see in a little bit. And so when we were de uh, developing the site itself, we researched a lot about different keywords, and I happen to be a bit of a domain name junkie. I, a bit. So if we get an idea for something, I'll go out and buy the domain. Another idea, I'll go buy that domain and all the variations of the domain. So I probably have 50 some odd wine club review domains that I'd purchased. So during that process, we're running through the list of all the different domain names that we purchased and we figure like, what is the best sounding domain name? What is the best one that's going to uh, uh, explain what we do? It'll help the search engine positioning and particularly when you're found in the search engine results, does our domain name help people find us and understand why they should click on us? So when we went through the list of all these different domains, we found that there were a couple of them that actually would be good for different purposes. So what we ended up doing is we made three or four basic sites. The, our big core site is the one over there. You see, yep, we love wine too. That's our wine club reviews and ratings.com site where we review and rate wine clubs. And then we also have our other wine club group.com, which in, in, encapsulated what we are. We are the wine club group. So we also made a couple of different websites. We used, a, I wanted to test out this directory software, so we made a, a directory 
where wine clubs can submit themselves as part of our overall branding and promotional offer efforts for the different advertisers. And then Wine Club Monthly, that was designed to be our newsletter. So they all had different specific purposes. And so that's how I justified, justified my domain name addictions. Um, but also I, I found that what we ended up doing is we ended up, I wasted a bit of time and we wouldn't have known that until we actually did it. So let me share with you some things that you might not want to do to waste your time. The Wine Club Monthly website, that was exclusively to house our newsletter sign up. Totally unnecessary. We didn't put our, our, um, our back issues there. There was no point in it. And also we had to set it up using Udesign and getting a brand uh, graphic logo associated with it. So it's all consistent. If you notice, all these logos are consistent using the same font. So it all looks the same. It just has a little bit of differentiation in terms of it's a directory or it's a review or it's a monthly. So time was wasted with the monthly uh, version, unnecessary. The directory, also kind of a waste, but it's a lot of fun because I'm a total geek and I got to play around with this directory plugin software from Premium Press and just, I get to play. And also it's a nice uh, ancillary, complimentary uh, promotional vehicle for advertisers. But the one thing that really did help us is uh, having both the wineclubgroup.com domain that we used as a way to promote ourselves and what we do for our clients and the advertisers. And so when we meet a, a merchant, we'll say, we're a wine club group. Come take a look at what we do, what we offer, our media kit and all that kind of stuff is there. And, but the real core was the wine club reviews and ratings.com thing. So there was some wasted efforts and some good efforts. And I'll let Eric tell you specifically about why the wine club group thing really helped us and saved our butts a lot in the last couple months. You know what, I'm gonna jump in real quick here. Um, Todd talks about our money pages, but just with this multi-site strategy, you know, go back to the one slide that showed us in the scientist lab coats, all right? This was a test bed. And if you're an affiliate, you need to be ready to test things. We had no idea going into this if it would work or not. And, you know, like Todd said, some things worked, some things didn't. Um, if we had never made these multiple domains, we wouldn't have known that. So it wasn't a failure, it was a test. A test, indeed. But, um, so then let's just get right into the, uh, the money pages. So, first of all, does anybody use the concept of money pages? Do you know what that means? Yes, no, money pages? Well, you're about to learn something? Great. Yeah. So, what we do is we review stuff, right? That's the focus of our website. We review stuff. And what do we want? We want to pre-sell visitors that come to our site and pre-sell them to purchase from our merchants. So that's our job, right? That's what we do. And what we want to do, our goal is to get them to click through our affiliate links and make a purchase, right? So that's what these pages are. To do this, we create the reviews and the reviews are our money pages. That's the whole focus of all the things that we do with our website. We want all of our efforts to get people to our review pages so they can see our stuff, click on our affiliate links, and go make the purchase. So that's so the way I like to look at it is like a concentric circles, right? Like a, um, like a dartboard, a target, right? So right in the center, the bullseye, that's your money pages. Then you have another concentric circle around it, some ancillary content. So for, for us, the ancillary content would be our top white wine pages or our top red pages where we would summarize and list some of our different review pages. And then a, the larger expanded circle beyond that would be our blog where we talk about timely, relevant, um, wine-related content for our audience. And all of these efforts, all, these, all of these different websites and pages link and focus our traffic to our money pages because that's where the money happens. Okay, so that's just, it's a really important concept to uh, recognize in terms of when you're building your site, what are your money pages? And so you wanna put a lot of your effort and focus on those pages in terms of linking and traffic driving to those pages. And then of course, the other thing that we did here is we have to optimize those pages. So Eric created these pages so they're all dynamically driven, all database driven. So they all look the same. Every one of our money pages, our review pages, follow the exact same format. You're gonna see that there's a, a title, the review, the star reviews, pros and cons 
a thumbnail image of the brand, the website that you're going to go to. You'll have a coupon if it's available that'll show there with a little you know scissors display. Beneath that, there'll be the full review where we've embedded our YouTube videos and images and whatnot from the merchant itself or from the wine club. They're they're all styled the exact same way. So what we wanted to do is make sure that those pages will do the job we want them to do. And what's the job we want them to do? Send the visitor to the merchant. We want them to click. And so we would use, um, it's called Crazy Egg. It's a heat map uh, product. It's also in our resource guide. Our resource guide. Everything we talk about here is available in our resource guide. So you don't have to worry about writing it down and finding URLs for it. It's all in our resource guide. So we used Crazy Egg to figure out are people clicking on the things that we think they're clicking on? Because when we designed the page, this is exactly how we expect it to look and, and perform. And then Eric slaps on Crazy Egg, and a week later we look at it in our next meeting, like, son of a gun. Nobody's clicking that link that we said, click, a, click. You know, they're not clicking it. They're clicking elsewhere. So that's really helpful to understand so we are able to optimize those money pages to uh, result in what we want. We want them to click and go buy. That is it. If you already have a site, I would challenge you to go take a look when you get back. Don't wait too long because everything you learn here, if you don't do it in the first week, you're probably not going to do it. As soon as you get back home, go look and see what your money pages are. Actually make a list. What are my money pages? And how are you driving traffic from the rest of your site into those money pages? If you're not making money, it may be because you don't even know what your money pages are. So how do we choose the merchants? I mean, so we found you know, 27 just within share sale and then also all the others across the different networks. So how did we choose the merchants that we wanted to work with? First of all, we always start with the OPMs that we know. Raise your hand if you have an OPM that you could call any day of the week for questions or she has Greg Hoffman Consulting, I'm sure. <laughs> so yeah, you should have at least, I mean, you should have at least one, but you really should have, you know, probably more like three to five that are kind of your go-to OPMs that you can ask questions, look at your site, things like that. Yes. I'm sorry, uh, what's OPM? OPM, the Outsource Program Manager. So those are affiliate managers that aren't working in-house for the merchant. They're outside consultants that are working for the merchant to manage the affiliate programs. Sometimes you'll hear affiliate manager and OPM interchanged, especially in presentations like this. And an OPM could be an OPM firm with a dozen affiliate managers and they may have, I don't know, like 80 clients or it can be a smaller group of two or three people working together that have a dozen clients. And a client would be a merchant. So if you called an OPM and it was like one or two people working together, they might have a dozen merchants that they work with. So by having a good relationship with these OPMs, and when you see that OPM's name listed for a particular merchant, then you know, we tend to go to those first because we know that those are the ones that we might be able to get custom creative or increased commissions or custom coupon codes or things like that. So those are usually our top choice for the merchants that we want to work with. Um, if you don't find any that have OPMs that you know or you've already you know, gone down that road and you've already picked as many of those as you can pick, um, next we start looking at the stats on the clubs. And you know, I have some of the stats up there for the California Wine club. Um, those are pretty darn good. When you see the earnings per click, um, that's actually earnings per 100 clicks, is $407. You imagine that. You spent 100 clicks and you made $407. <laughs> that's pretty fabulous. Um, average commission, $30. So for every sale that you're making with them, you're averaging about $30. Um, and reversals, 0%. That means that they're not reversing any sales. Um, they don't have fraud in their programs. They don't have a bunch of bad egg affiliates or anything like that. So this is just the starting point. Um, you also see up there um, the 15% commission. You see the 90-day cookie so that you're going to get commission for something for 90 days after somebody clicks through that link. Um, it's kind of a starting point, just things that you can begin the conversation with the merchant. If you were to see, you know, 60% reversal rate and EPC of $17, you'd say it's not even worth it. Um, but I do caution you to go beyond the numbers. If you had seen a 17% reversal rate here, it doesn't mean don't work with them. It means 
means contact the merchant and say, hey, you know, I'd like to work with you. However, I see this reversal rate and it's really high. And they might just say, you know, oh yeah, we had a problem with our shopping cart and it overcredited and we had to back out a bunch of the credits. It could be something as simple as that. So it's really just talking to that merchant and finding out what's going on. Um, so you want to compare the commission rates, um, you know, compare the 15% commission, see if there are other um, opportunities that you might have that might be a 15% commission rate that's just for any average site, but because you're very specific in the niche, you might be able to get a higher commission from a particular merchant um, and compare all of those stats across the different merchants. And then for us, in addition to the straight commission rates, there are a few other things that we look for. Um, we have um, one merchant in particular that we go beyond just having commissions. They do some paid placements on our sites during different times of year. We do um, get paid per click sometimes for different things that we do with them. They do buy some ad space from us now that we've established this good relationship with them. So um, we also look for those kind of opportunities that we might be able to have beyond just the affiliate commission if we really strengthen that partnership. And then we also do kind of some basic packages for our reviews because we found that when we were doing reviews, it wasn't just a simple process. It wasn't just write a couple of paragraphs, put in a stock image from their website or their logo that we pulled from the network. And we're really comparing a lot of things on these pages that we do. So you know, we will charge $150 for a blog post. If it's a merchant that comes to us and says, you know, hey, we want you to be our affiliate. We'd love to get up on your site. And we look at them and we think, well, your stats aren't real great. You don't seem to have a lot of sales you haven't had a commission and share a sale for the last you know 17 weeks <laughs> so we don't really want to put a lot of work into this um, pay us 150 dollars and we'll do it sometimes we'll do that um, that's for the basic blog post and then the other was what 450 that we have a $450 package that goes way beyond that, that we will do a video um, title, put that up on YouTube. We will do images that'll go up on Flickr. We will build a blog post. We'll build the review page that we showed with the star ratings and the pros and cons and all of those kind of things. And the reason we went to that, we couldn't have done that initially when we built the site. We couldn't have just built a site and then started reaching out to merchants saying, pay us $450 for a review. That wouldn't have worked. But because we've started you know, building up some credibility across the line, merchants and they want to be featured on our site. They want to be there because they see that we're ranking for terms that they want to be a part of. Now that we have that credibility, you know, we can say, hey, listen, you know, this is going to take us three hours just to do the video and all the processing and another hour for the picture and two hours for the review. We're not sure that we trust this affiliate relationship completely, so pay for the upfront package and then, you know, we'll work something out down the stretch as far as the commissions going forward. All right, I'm just going to touch on this slide quickly because we have a lot to cover. Um, this shows a couple of our stats we're using Google Analytics. The top graph is all of our traffic in 2014. And it looks like the most useless graph ever because it is. Um, when we were at Affiliate Summit last year, um, there was a lady in Columbus, Ohio, who shared a blog post that we wrote in 2013, which was pairing wine with Girl Scout cookies. Now. I remember I said in the beginning, we don't know anything about wine, so when I had to pair wine with Girl Scout cookies, I just did a Google search, pairing wine with Girl Scout cookies, and curated that content and rewrote it. And our post took off. We had 125,000 people come to the website. Um, over That was over 65 days. We actually had almost 20,000 people come to the website in one day just looking at that post. The result of that post was absolutely nothing in sales. Um, but we did get to, because, I mean, people are just looking, they see it in their Facebook feed, they click, they go, oh, that's neat, and they hit share, and then they move on, you know? So it's not, um, it wasn't a money page. Um, it wasn't, we weren't setting um, affiliate links on that page. We were just putting it out there for content. It did, however, give us some backlinks, which helped in our SEO. And then I did a, a radio interview with um, a station w in Washington. What's it? Is it W-Top? W-Top, I think. Yeah, down in, I think it was in Washington, D.C., which was the most terrifying thing because I wrote this piece of BS content, and then a radio station called me and like, hey, we want to do a radio interview. And I was like, uh, sure. <laughs> Luckily, if you ever do a media interview, you probably know more than they know because, sorry if you're in radio, but, I mean, they have to cover so many different things. So the odds that they would know more about wine than you do after a few months are pretty slim. The bottom graph is much more accurate. Um, that shows just our organic traffic, which is our primary uh, means of generating traffic. Um, the first little bump is Q4 2012. The next bigger bump in the middle is Q4 2013. And then you see a terrible, horrific drop. That was when we got hit by Panda, and we'll talk about that. And then you see it come back up at the end. That was Q4 2014, the one that just passed. And Panda hit us, and we came back 
with a vengeance. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but the key to SEO is backlinks, and we buy backlinks. If you're gonna tweet anything from that session, there you go, we buy backlinks. Um, but you know, we don't just go out there and you know, willy-nilly buy backlinks. Um, the screenshot on the left shows this guy who was talking about um, various wine clubs, and I just went out and said, hey, can you just mention that we reviewed the Wall Street Journal wine club? And if you do, I'll you know, throw you five bucks for your trouble. And he put the link in and sent me his PayPal email address and I PayPal'd him five bucks. That's how we buy backlinks. Um, it's not some big directory service. Um, if you're using any of those directory services, you'll get caught and then you get penalized from Penguin. If you don't know what Panda and Penguin are, do a lot of research on, if you're into SEO as a traffic means, you need to know what those are. Um, the infographic on the right, someone spent a lot of time building that pizza and wine pairing, and then they let their domain expire. So I used, uh, GoDaddy has a domain backorder service. Once we saw the domain was expired, we put a backorder on it, we ended up getting it and redirecting it to us. That is buying a backlink, if you ask me, because all those links were pointing to their content, and then we just snagged the content from them when they let it expire. And another time we noticed a, a guy who was not an affiliate was reviewing wine and talking about wine clubs. And I said, hey, if I send you a wine club, will you review it? And he said, sure. And I said, great, I'll send it to you. Give me your address. The only thing I ask is that you link back to our website. There was no indication. I didn't need it linked back with a specific keyword text. I didn't ask for it to be a nofollow link. I just said, I want to link back. All right. After we paid for the club, used a coupon that we had, and got paid our commission on the sale, that link cost me $12, okay? Again, that's a link that's not gonna be picked up by these fancy Google algorithms because it was so, we had to go through so much manual effort to get that link, all right? So if you're doing automated link building, you're gonna get caught. If you go through this manual process, um, odds are you're gonna do a lot better and you know, whoever says they don't buy links is not doing SEO the right way. Um, they just might not think about buying links the way we think about it. Um, one thing that Trisha mentioned earlier was long tail keywords. We don't use any software for long tail keywords. We use our head. Um, so you just start, you know, searching. You just start thinking. There's no magic software, so you will not find that in our resource guide. All right. Now let's talk a little bit about video real quick. So um, we really like implementing video on our website because, well, a few reasons. One, it gives a little personal connection with us and the audience and to show that we're real people, it's genuine reviews and we kind of discuss things and we have it on video, they can see our facial expressions and they, they can even see that Trisha's daughter's holding the camera and <laughs> watching it or Eric's daughter gets on camera and talks. So there's a personal connection that you have with video and also um, in terms of uh, uh, layers of flavor, layers of different content. You know, you have your written content, audio content, and written, I'm sorry, and, and video content. It's a great way to, um, to increase and overall uh, develop your presence on your website. Um, and for us, it's also super important because we show people what they get. A lot of, of different merchants that you may work with, they may have pictures of what a customer is going to get, but in our business, it's really beneficial to show people exactly what they get when they open up this box. This is the welcome letter. This is the tasting notes that you receive. It's a full, glossy, full, high production value product that talks about the wines, the winery, the regions, the winemakers, some recipes, and some you know, food pairings. And you can get into all that kind of stuff on the video. And then you can show the actual wine. So that's the kind of stuff that we were able to do uh, by implementing a video on our, um, our, our sites. And also, um, it's sometimes it's easier to watch somebody tell you about the differences between this club and that club than to just read off a checklist. So there's also that ad additional benefit. Um, so what kind of videos have we done? We've done videos where individuals like Trisha will review Wall Street Journal or Eric will re uh, do Naked Wines and or I'll do... Google uh, that. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> we didn't put that picture on here. Um, or we'll do videos together, like uh, Trish and I did one with California Wine Club, where we just Skyped and we recorded the video where, of us talking about this club. Or Eric and I did one where we actually drank some wine, we tasted this wine together. That was goofy. But <laughs> until you do it, you don't know if it's going to work out or not. But So we were able to do a lot of different types of interviews, I'm sorry, videos, including interviewing our merchants. 
So they're a wealth of information, so we can actually get information from them where they talk about their business, their wine clubs, or for instance, other um, Planck Wine Club, they actually helped us by teaching people about uh, wines. So we're not the experts, she's an expert. And she came on and did a video for us. So that's great content that we can have, right? So how do we do it? Let's talk about it. Um, well, first of all, another key thing to know about this is the SEO benefits of video, right? Uh, you get backlinks from YouTube, in your description, um, you want to review to our money. We'll review a link to our money pages, the review pages. We'll link to some of our ancillary pages within the content, the description of YouTube, um, and then also dis um, it's discoverable within YouTube. So it's a relatively large search engine of itself. So if that's appropriate for your business, uh, that's another great way to drive traffic. So now quickly, let's talk about next slide. How we the how-to stuff. These are the steps that we take in order to make the web uh, make the videos. Um, first thing, I, lessons learned. I've tried a bunch of different video editing skills, and tactics. Went from relatively complex with lots of transitions, lots of graphics, lots of blah. It was a waste of time. It was fun, but it was really a waste of time. Um, simpler is better. So that's also nice to know because you don't have to do a whole bunch of work to edit videos to get into making videos and implementing and embedding videos on your website. So um, we found that, for instance, if there was too much writing, it would distract from the content. Too much transitions, it would just, it was too cluttered, it looked yucky. And also, we found that after time, over time, some of our merchants would actually change their pricing. And if we have the price printed on the text inside the video, that kind of screws things up, right? So simpler the better. And um, so specifically how we do it is I get to be the video guy because I love to geek out and that kind of stuff. So they'll send me their videos and we all use different cameras. Like Trisha, what camera do you use? Is this your, phone. your phone. And Eric uses? I have a flip cam. Flip cam, is that what it's yeah. called? Okay. Circa 2002. Yeah. <laughs> and I use- It a works. <laughs> That's right. And I use a Kodak ZI8. And what I like about that one, it's also discontinued now, it's Circa 2000, whatever. But it's, um, it has an external audio mic input. So I really like that because in order to uh, deliver good quality video, you have to focus on the audio. Because when people are watching something and they hear a high buzz or it's just kind of off, they get away from that because it's, it doesn't, it's not a pleasant experience. So we want to focus on high quality audio. So that's what I do and I use um, a lavalier mic. It's a lapel mic. It's an omnidirectional Sony. Um, it's important to know I put this in the resource guide. <laughs> what are you looking at me like that for? We lost them. Oh, okay. <laughs> so then the software we use to pull it all together, it's ScreenFlow. I'm a total geek, aren't I? I love this stuff. Cool. But so ScreenFlow is a software that we use to they'll give me the files and we kind of mash it together, crop things out and layer it all in. And that's like when uh, Trish and I did our uh, California Wine Club video. It was just us on, on, uh, on Skype and recorded that. Um, and then, yeah, so that's it. Oh, yeah, one other thing. The format of the video, we'll do a quick intro. Then we do a, um, uh, what's called a, a splash intro from Fiverr.com, where you can buy what's called a logo reveal. So then you just give them your logo, they do a quick little logo reveal, and then bam, we do the video, uh, the review after that. So I'll follow that format. You have to go into YouTube and look at one of the most recent videos just to see what an amazing job Todd does with them. I mean, it's like whenever I go to watch the finished product compared to what I dropped into the Dropbox for him that I know is just kind of like me offhandedly for three minutes just like riffing on the wine club and I go to watch it on YouTube and it's like the logo and the price and then this zooms in and zooms and out. The editing. And editing. <laughs> All the times I go, oh crap. Sorry, Todd. Let me start again. <laughs> And the outtakes sometimes at the end of them, and yeah, you have to go at least watch one video the way that he does the videos because I think they're they're fun yes. and entertaining. I think the bloopers are fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever have bloopers. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I just make faces at him before and after usually. <laughs> all right, social media. So this is kind of one of my responsibilities. Um, you can see our Facebook and our Twitter from fairly recently. For us, the social media is great for spreading our content, but it's not really great for sales. So, you know, there are other niches where you're going to be able to get a lot of sales out of your social media. Wine clubs just aren't things that people buy 
on the spur of the moment. I don't know, Jerry, am I right about that? People don't just like say, oh, I just saw that. I think I'll quickly buy a wine club. You know, they're the kind of things people are, they're waiting for a gift or it's something that they've been thinking about doing or they talk to a friend about it. It's not something that they see pop up on Facebook and say, oh, today's the day that I buy a wine club. So, you know, we use mainly, we use Facebook for images. Um, we've tried a number of different things on Facebook and the images are what do best for us. And usually really simple things, like for Christmas, I found um, on deposit photos for a dollar, I got a picture of a snowman. And then I went into PicMonkey and used their like snowflake, whatever of the month font and put, I'm dreaming of a wine Christmas. And it was the snowman holding this little wine glass and it like spread like wild, wildfire with shares and comments and things like that. So it was just something that, it was a $1 picture that I got and added a little bit of text to it. And um, it did well for us on Facebook just in terms of generating some new likes to the page. And then we also put our content, obviously, the posts that we write each week, we post to our Facebook page. And then we try to put some fun things too, whether, you know, the article recently about how red wine is as good for you as running or working out is, or, you know, BuzzFeed articles, how you know that you drink too much wine or some fun things like that. Um, in the beginning, when we started these pages, we did two things and we did them wrong. Number one, we invited all of our friends to like the page. Well, it turns out that only like 10 to 15 percent of our friends actually like wine but they all like the page just to be polite and help us get our numbers up but they didn't engage with the page at all because they don't like wine and then we also ran some contests you know like the facebook page change that anymore but some of you know with some of the other social media like the facebook page to get entered they don't necessarily like wine they just wanted wanted to win the prize so we ended up having a lot of facebook fans that didn't engage with our page at all. And when you have that happen, now Facebook is penalizing you for that. So it doesn't do any good to have lots and lots of Facebook fans. If those fans aren't engaging with your content, Facebook isn't gonna show your content to anybody at all. So um, that's something that you know we kind of wish we hadn't done and we've had to try to bounce back from that in different ways by beefing up the content to stuff that people will actively engage with a lot. And we do some boosted posts, you know, if we have something that we think is going to do fairly well by giving it um, the, the boosted sponsored post on Facebook, then it gives it just a little bit more and we have seen some success in that. Not a tremendous amount, but we've seen a little bit of success. On Twitter over there you can see, you know, we share some of the same types of things you know that's our own content we always make the images 560 by 292 so that they show up nicely on facebook they show up nicely if we happen to post them on google plus and they look pretty decent in twitter as well so we do share a lot of the same things but interestingly on twitter we get a lot more clicks on the content that we post there and i use shareist to track all of our shares so it will show me when i post the exact same thing at the exact same time on facebook and on twitter we will have a lot more people and you can see it I mean, we have 2800 followers on twitter but you know how twitter is if somebody doesn't see it quickly they're probably not going to see it facebook you know we have a thousand but things will continue to show up in the feed if people are clicking so um, the, the number of clicks that we have on the content on twitter is a lot higher so we do post more of the general wine content, you know, the, um, what was some, like New York won the award for wine state or something this year, you know, they kind of pitch in and give me information and I have Google alerts set up to give me just general wine club information. I have Google alerts set up for the words wine clubs, wine club reviews, and also for some of our merchants that I want to keep track of what they're doing. That gives me great content to be able to um, share through our social media. Um, Pinterest. We have a Pinterest account and we have a number of different boards. We have specific boards for each of the clubs, especially, we don't do it for every club, but for the ones we work with close, closely, we have a Pinterest board that'll have our video and then also has all of the images that we took of our unboxing of the club. Um, then we also just have a lot of fun pages. We have a wine and crafts page that we actually have um, a friend of ours, Jen Goody, that's in affiliate marketing. She does a lot of craft stuff, so we collaborate on that. And anytime she sees something wine related in her craft world, she always posts that on there for us. So it's just a little collaboration. And then out of that with her came um, actually a joint project that we did where she put together some wine crafts and did all the images and the instructions. We put it on our site, she put it on hers, so we kind of cross promoted them. So that was something nice that came out of that. Um, also, we have just like wine quotes, and it 
that is dual purpose because they have, it's like just a funny wine or wine things and quotes or something like that board. And as I'm pinning those things, then that's giving me ideas of things to share then on the social media. So I might see something there that I'll share directly or it'll give me an idea um, if it's a quote that I'm seeing happening a lot of how I can add that to an image and then we can use that on Facebook. And we also have, we just tested part of our experimenting things, wine clubs that ship to Florida. And we just did one board called Wine Clubs That Ship to Florida, and we pinned images from our site of all the different wine clubs we know ship to Florida. And that page now ranks in the top 10 when you search for wine clubs that ship to Florida. So in addition to us having a YouTube video of wine clubs that ship to Florida that ranks, plus our page of wine clubs that ship to Florida, we also have a Pinterest board. So when you can rank you know, three or four of the results in the top 10, you can make some money for that keyword. Um, Tumblr we tried because my kids are constantly on Tumblr so I thought maybe they know something that I don't not good for our niche because it's kids mainly on Tumblr I guess um, it just it was too much to keep up with there weren't good enough tools for me to be able to manage that for the time that I use on the site um, Google Plus we do have an account we kind of dabble in it mainly if we have some content that we want to just try to make sure it gets indexed quickly we'll post it there but it's not something we do consistently um, and then as I mentioned before I use Shareist and I use Hootsuite to kind of manage everything because we have so many different accounts cool me again um, so how do we keep it all straight? Um, it's a lot. You know, there's three of us. We have the multiple sites. We have content going on in all different directions. So we use Skype a lot. Um, we keep this basically open chat window. Mine's called Wine Clubs and Mastermind Group. <laughs> Yours is called something else, isn't it? Um, mine's called Drink, Drink, Drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so we just keep that open all the time. Um, and it's nice because we can do our calls on there. Um, we do those calls now, you know, weekly or every other week, depending on the time of year. But then it's just an open communication for us. I'm on Skype pretty much all day, every day. Eric's on Skype most of the day, every day. Todd <laughs> graces us with his presence every now and again. <laughs> then I'll read all the stuff they talked about for last week. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice um, if you're working with other people because you get that thing in your head and it's not so important that you need to have a conversation with them or whatever, but you just drop it in there. You know, maybe it's a link to say, hey, take a look at this, or um, whoever's on, can you please review this post for me or take a look at something real quick. So that's just an ongoing chat that we keep going all the time. Um, the meetings that we have, you know, initially we started, we were meeting every week. Now we're meeting every other week. Um, and those calls, we set our goals and, you know, we'll say what our goals are for the next week or the next two weeks, and then we follow up with each other on those. We also talk about our content, what we're going to be doing. We set up a content calendar so that we rotate through the three of us. Um, we each have to take equal turns in writing all of the blog posts, and so it'll just be set up at the beginning of the month. Me, then Todd, then Eric, then me, then Todd, then Eric, and sometimes if we know specifically, you know, it's going to be Thanksgiving soon, when's Eric going to do his Thanksgiving wine post? Or it might just be open post week, find something that you can write about. So the content calendar is a little bit fluid like that. Um, and then each of us just has a different niche. It just worked out really well that, you know, between the three of us, Eric is the programmer, Todd is fabulous at the videos. Um, I do more of the, a little more of the content, but also the social media stuff. So we each just kind of have our own area, not just that we're used to doing on a daily basis, but that we enjoy. So it makes having the site fun because the things that we're doing are the things that we like to do. Um, I don't like to do any kind of programming, WordPress, anything like that. I actually tune out most of the time in the calls when they start talking and just let them talk about it because I just don't like that. And the site wouldn't be fun to me if that was something that I was having to do on a regular basis. Um, other things, we're always checking for dead links. The worst thing is when you have a money page and the affiliate link is broken. <laughs> you can be sending a lot of traffic to a merchant and have no idea that that link is going to a dead page on their site. So you've got to continuously check those um, links. The analytics um, during you know the peak day, like when the Girl Scout cookie posts took off, we were watching the real-time analytics and talking like, oh my gosh, it's insane, look at how many people. But normally it might be that you know during the holidays, I check a couple of times a day non-holiday season I'm just checking once a week but we watch those analytics Google Analytics pretty closely we're always building backlinks as Eric talked about before um, tracking conversion rates Eric would send us pictures during the holiday season of his whiteboard in his office where he'd list our top four merchants and the percentage which that they were converting for us. And he would just take a quick picture, send it to us via Skype, and then we could all take a look and see where we were with each merchant and what we needed to do about that. 
And lastly, we watch for revenue, which Eric's going to talk about. Yep, and we've got less than 15 minutes. We're going to try to keep moving here. Um, profit, this is what you're here for. I know it's tiny, um, but I'll just outline this real quick. In 2012, we grossed $10,200. In 2013, it was $20,300. And in 2014, the gross was $25,140. Um, so it's not anything we're gonna retire on. We're splitting that three ways. Um, so it's important to know this is extra income for us. In the off time, which for us is January to October, that's a lot of off time, we spend about eight hours a month on this project. And in November, December, we probably spend about 20 hours a month. That's not each person, that's combined. Okay, so in December, we spent 20 hours working on this website. Um, what that works out to is in 2014, we made about $200 an hour when we work on the site. Okay, now that's not to say that we could just say, oh great, we're gonna forget everything else and only work on the wine club site. And we, if we each did that, we'd put in 120 hours a week and we'd make $200 an hour. That would not work. All right, so we balanced, you know, when we're making more money, we can put some, we put some more time in and when things slow down, we back off. Um, our expenses real quick in 2012 was $777. That's the year we got started. So we had to pay for the Fiverr intro. We had to pay for the, the themes, um, all that stuff. In 2013, it dropped down to $360. Our, most of our expenses are domain names, um, occasional graphics, a dollar here or there, and paying content writers, which now and again, we'll pay someone to do some content for us. Our biggest expense in 2014 was affiliate karaoke. We were a sponsor and that cost us $700. But still, in, you know, in 2014, 25,000 in income and our expenses to the business were $240. Okay, so it's not, you don't need to put a lot of money into this to get something out of it. Um, one of the things to notice on the P&L is that there's that big blank area in the beginning there, down, yep, that big blank area. So when we started, we were working with maybe eight merchants and those were the ones that were making us money. And then as we added merchants, we'd add them to the bottom of that list. And so you kind of see this, this uh, angle coming down where as we add merchants, they begin adding revenue. And then you notice the top ones, the top three or four, stopped making us money in 2014. Okay, so um, we're gonna talk about some of them in a little bit, but it's important to diversify you know, as you continue to evolve your business. Um, this is a Google spreadsheet that I update before our call, and it shows our revenue, our expenses, and then you know take that, divide it by three, and what the payouts are. So speaking of those challenges, one of them was Sellers Wine Club, and good Lord, I hope they're not in the room. Um, <laughs> but right around Thanksgiving, we noticed that we had a lot of zero dollar commissions from them. Now, Sellers is one of the ones that Trisha had mentioned earlier, don't put all your eggs in one basket. They offered everything. They had a champagne club, they had a red, you know, this specific red wine club, and they had a Chardonnay club, and these were all keywords that we were ranking for. All of a sudden, we started seeing these zero dollar sales. Anyway, through a series of arguments, which if you, you know, go to A Best Web and search for Sellers Wine Club, you can read the whole thing as it played out on public stage, or you can go to ericnagel.com, and I think it, the blog post is called Screwing Your Affiliates Black Friday Cyber Monday Edition because it just so happened that they decided to make this change on Thanksgiving and then stop answering their phones. So the biggest shopping days of the year, um, we had these issues with Seller Wine Club. Um, so we had to, you know, pretty much we had all this traffic, now what are we gonna do with it? So we had to start sending them other places, we stopped promoting them, we pulled them off our state pages, we pulled them off our main review pages, and we had to find other clubs to um, backfill, you know, who's selling the Champagne Club now, who can give us a Pinot Noir Club. A um, Couple other things you can do if a merchant drops you because they eventually dropped us because we were too loud and brought attention to the matter. Um, once they dropped us, the first thing we did is went to skim links and started running through skim links. They eventually figured that out and then they forced us out of skim links, we went to big link and now we're running through Prosperant and we get maybe, I don't know, a sale every three months out of them because we don't promote them anymore. But in case someone does find a seller's link, we're still making money off of that. So if you get kicked out of a program, I didn't tell you this, but go to Skim Links, Big Link, and Prospering. <laughs> hey, right. so we're low on time. We should yeah. probably jump down to the panda and Q&A. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. So, 
We were hit by Google Panda. Um, this Google Panda is known for low quality content and our low quality content was we decided to create 50 pages from our database that was wine clubs that ship to, insert state name here. So they all looked about the same. Um, you can see on the left hand side, you can see the little state image and then there's a paragraph at the top that talks about um, the days of prohibition and there's all these interstate laws, which if you ever want to go to sleep at night, read some of the interstate wine trafficking laws. And then we listed all the clubs that ship to these states. However, certain clubs ship to a lot of states. So maybe we had 42 pages that looked really similar. And one day, actually August was really good for us. And you'll, when you read about Google Panda, you'll read about this surge. And we saw the surge in August and we were making great money and we're like, holy crap, if this is August, imagine what Q4 is gonna look like. And then September 3rd hit. And that's that big drop. And we had another holy crap moment. <laughs> and so for a while we talked to these SEO experts, um, even though all three of us have spoken, taught, consult on SEO. We were just, you know, had no idea what to do. So we made some radical changes. We changed our domain name from Wine Club Reviews and Ratings to Wine Club Group. Thanks, Todd, for having that in his back pocket. And then every one of these state pages, um, we made changes to. We have 300 words of unique content on them. All of the content is not indexable. Is that a word? Now it is. It's not indexable by Google. And if you want to know how we did that, you can see me afterwards or just go to any of our state pages and view source. Um, we did that, we did that, 300 words. The result, um, it took three weeks once we started making these changes to recover our lost traffic. Um, we now have had our, some of our best SEO, our organic search days. And I just looked before coming here in January this year versus January last year, our organic traffic is up 40% year over year. So it worked. And since I have the mic, if we did it all again today, um, which, hey, we did, beer club reviews, because all these OPMs that we talked to told us, why are you in wine? Beer clubs make a lot more money. So we built this beer club review site. I just want to talk about the domain name. We went with beerclub.reviews. Um, .reviews is a domain name, a TLD that you can purchase right now. And we did that as a test to see if it would, could be indexed and picked up by the search engines, and it can, and it ranks just as well as a .com. So if you're sitting there trying to figure out what domain to use, go ahead and look at all the other ones. Wine clubs dot, no, wine dot club just sold for $140,000 and we're waiting patiently to see if Jerry bought it. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. All right, so. All right, oh, so we're going to give you the resource guide, but we want you first, um, we need a picture to update that one that we keep using over and over. So if you have your cameras and can just take one real quick before we give you the resource guide and like, email it to us or tweet it or something we really because eric had glasses and i didn't have my braces yet and I, we just okay. needed updates so oh, thanks <laughs> all right so um this is the resource guide so wineclubgroup.com slash asw15 um, and that is okay to share if you want to put that on twitter if you want to go ahead and put that on twitter that's all right with us um, <laughs> and so that has our contact information on it at the bottom and it also has all the different resources that we talked about it's got some affiliate links in it for some of the things that we use because what kind of affiliate marketers would we be if we didn't put up affiliate links for the things that we like? So, but everything that's in that resource guide is something that we actually use. So we might, I think we have time for maybe like one or two one questions. Minute, 32 quick. seconds. Oh, one question, if anybody <laughs> has one real quick. Otherwise, we'll also, we'll stick around for a few minutes afterward. We'll be around um, the conference the next couple of days. We would love to chat with you about how we did everything, how we're continuing to do things, and um, how we're continuing to grow as affiliates ourselves as we learn more and more. Cool, that's it. Thanks for coming, guys. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. And thank you.